Obviously, get my hair done as often as possible, but I just get this. I think this is a problem in with hair hairdressers is that you go and it feels like you're going maybe to the physio or something where you haven't done your exercises. Like, yeah, no, sh no shit, I haven't got my hair right. That's why I'm going to you. Like, I don't need to feel negative that my hair looks like shit at the end of a month when it's grown out. I use your products, yeah, yeah. I'll buy some when I need it, but I don't need them every six weeks. I have this problem with the hairdresser, they're lovely girls, but <laughs> every time, every time your hair's dry, it's like, yeah, I swim every day, I swim every day, <laughs> there's not much I can do about it. The recommended instructions for chlorine resistant products is probably not swimming 40 k's a week, so I just think maybe, I think they're underestimating the problem. I, I don't know a single girl that does sport that wouldn't go to the hairdresser and then just get a copper bollocking but you really, you just need their help. Of course you don't want to look like shit. Thanks mate, that's a heaps good indicator. Heaps. We just have to remember to get a receipt so that we don't have to pay for parking because this takes so long or something. Oh, <laughs> you just sit back, there's Steph back in the bowl with popcorn just <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> Why the hell does this take so long? It's never used to take so long, it's progressively become this ordeal. If you want it to look fast. Like before you go in the pool, like swimming and stuff. Uh, I use like a cream. I'm trying to use a spray because a oh. cream might hold your hair down a bit too much. Oh, okay. It's so, a little bit lighter. Yeah. When I'm in there, I'll need to put something under my hip. Under your hip? Yeah. Yeah. So my butt doesn't hurt. Okay. We can put a few towels around there. Yeah, just on this one. Yeah, Maybe sure. Even just like one towel under there. That's fine. Taxi fara, taxi fara, taxi fara, tax, 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 tax. I'm trying to say taxi driver, taxi fara, in German, but it keeps, see I'm wrong. <laughs> so I could sit here all day. I think it must be my Australian accent. Taxi fara, taxi fara. <laughs> Well, I want to learn to speak German. I speak a little Deutsch, but I probier it. I'm trying. I can go to the next word, which is tag, which is day. I should be able to get this one. Tag. Tag. Wrong. I mean, come on. Tag. 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 <laughs> so it's been slow progress. Um, basically, I'm learning to speak German because I like to race, well we train um, Switzerland which is speak Swiss German and then I race often in um, say Frankfurt, Hamburg, Roth so um, it's just kind of cool, it's a distraction from the training, it's a bit different so um, I suck. Tug. <laughs> Tug. <laughs> Do 
lots of people run bottles on the front of their bars. Um, I tested it for me and we found that, yeah, I guess as you, I mean, I'm not an expert in aerodynamics. I certainly am not a rocket scientist or don't work for an airline, but it, you imagine now that as people kind of get more comfy bringing the bars up to like settle in, you sort of like that bottle that sits on the front kind of goes from what once would have been maybe just piercing the wind around your arms. It actually contributes, I think, to drag when it lifts up because it's creating like a bit of a wall. Like you, the more you bring it up, the more it like sits there. And I guess it's further up too. Like if there's a bottle, I guess with the Canyon, how it's integrated and they've tested that on the front, it's integrated and the, the water is closer to the center of gravity. Whereas you put a bottle up here and then you bring your arms up, then you've got weight that's like sitting in an area that might be a little less stable. I mean, it's all marginal, but yeah, it looks pretty more, I mean, it looks more slick on the frame, of course. <laughs> Everyone's got integrated bentos. I think it's like the minimum now, like to have a bento box built onto the frame. I guess for bike manufacturers, it's a, all of this is like a, becomes like Lego. Like you want to be able to take it all off if you want to race the UCI, you can't have any of that. So the more it's, the more you can deconstruct the bike and reconstruct it the way it needs to be, the better. There's some interesting designs with the water, like the water in the back, the water in the front, the water in the side of the frame. Uh, it's all it's very innovative, which is pretty cool. Like, I mean, yeah, just got to keep pushing the boundaries, I think, with, uh, with design. Look forward to seeing what comes out next. I guess aerodynamics is, like, useful to a point. I mean, I test, I've tested everything that I change. I always test everything that I do. I take it really seriously, even um, any equipment, in fact. But... You know, it's to a point it becomes impractical at some stage. So yeah, a bottle in the bars might be more suitable to someone that's got poor flexibility who can't reach a bottle at the back. Um, and yeah, I guess everyone's moving to these like aero bottles on the down tube, but you can only put certain foods in there. I put a certain supply of like a salty, like I put my precision hydration type product with salt in there because it's a smaller bottle and it's sort of a supply of something that I don't need to replace because you can't then refill that bottle. It's it's a once only use. And it's also debatable whether it adds to aerodynamics anyway. It, I mean, so yeah, different races, you need different things and you do have to consider practicality. And then also, I guess I've tested everything before on both the track um, and the wind tunnel. I feel like the track's more practical. Like you'll see in when you're um, on the turbo, for instance, you're, uh, you're e it's easier to hold a position an unnatural position, whereas when you're applying real force under real conditions, say on a track where you're actually physically riding, things get uh, leveraged and so it's not necessarily exactly the same. So that's why we test a lot of professionals test on the track. It's just a little bit more, uh, I say it's a little bit more practical in real world. Um, it's something that might be theoretically perfect and you can hold it on it in a wind tunnel it may not be the same for you personally when you actually have to see up the road and those sort of things. I mean, when you're in a turbo, you don't actually have to see, and you can hypothesize that you would stay in that position, but when you need to physically see or you'll crash, like it's a totally different scenario, and that brings out different things. So it's important to test both, definitely. And then also, yeah, consider what is practical and what's not practical. If you can't reach a bottle, it's no use to anyone. I mean, this is all coming from someone sitting in a cape with a I don't even know what this is around my head to make it get warmer. <laughs> Sorry, <not very> serious. <laughs>
tied back in the bike, I can scoot the hair in and then it's fully enclosed within the helmet. So um, actually it is kind of like a little advantage. And then I get off and I can run and then there's enough hair left that when it gets wet, it kind of adds a cooling effect when I'm running, like slapping on my neck and stuff and stores a bit of water. Even though, yeah, maybe it's uh, a bit of a fun haircut while I'm not in the office anymore. Um, it actually does help me a little bit, tiny bit, maybe just a little bit, like 1% of 1% on race day. A drop of water.